Can you see my computer? Yeah, you oh, you kind of can. Got my project planner here. Yeah. All right, protege. Let's do this. I've always loved science, especially in school. So I tend to always observe and make observations about things that I see. Things that I've observed over the past week. I've been asking myself a lot lately, are you happy? And I think it's a question that seems simple enough to answer, but in reality it's, it's actually got a lot of gravity that it holds. It's asking, are you comfortable? Are you uncomfortable? Are you making an advancement in your life that's going to help not just you, but other people? The first step in moving towards a happier lifestyle is recognizing that there are always improvements to make. If you were in a room with a bunch of people that you didn't like or that were making you feel uncomfortable, you wouldn't stay there unless you were scared of those people. You'd get up and leave. So are you in a situation right now where you are genuinely happy and comfortable with the way that you're living? And if the answer is no, how can you fix that? How can you change that? How can you repurpose purpose back into your life? I've been on social media a lot lately, like more than I usually am. And one of the things I've been noticing is people are getting more and more involved in social movements via social media. Not too long ago, we had marriage equality that was passed across the nation. That was great for the country. It was great for the LGBTQ community. It was great for the youth of America that feels like they have nowhere else to go. But <laughs> there are other things that need our attention. And perhaps marriage equality was something that may be throwing us off the scent of these things that are more important. I feel like social media is a great way to express what you're feeling and, and try to make people understand that sometimes, like I said, marriage equality, amazing thing that happened for this country, please do not get me wrong, and searching through some of the trending tags that you can see. You see that there's a lot of things that are bothering a lot of people. People, especially the youth of America, we see things wrong with this country that older generations don't. They grew up that way. That's just how it's always been. So it doesn't seem abnormal to them to have an education system that is not only completely out of date for the type of generation that we have in school right now, but you also have things like how the environment is literally decaying every second. And there are so many different things that we could be doing to help progress our society towards a more technologically advanced and a cleaner, more resource-based economy, but for some reason we're not doing it. I was at the bank today and I saw two kids sitting, I'm assuming waiting for their parents to like finish banking, and they were reading books. Now, granted, they were probably summer reading books, like we've all had to do. When I saw these two kids reading books instead of on their phones or playing video game or even just reading like a Kindle, it puts some kind of like restoration in me. I think when you start to see um, a heavier tax put on the knowledge that you're actually learning in school and what you're actually going to take out of school and use in the real world and, and contribute to society with, when that takes precedent over getting an A over an F, getting a perfect attendance record, or popularity, I think that's when you'll start to see like an inner reform within the education system and it may not even be like mandated. I think it'll just kind of naturally happen. I've noticed there are three vegan, completely vegan uh, restaurants that I frequent pretty often and they're all in, I would say, medium to low income places. And that is exactly what we need in this country. Before I like came across all this information about not just how animals are treated in terrible, terrible conditions, how meat and dairy and chicken and egg uh, production is so harmful for the environment. Not only are you saving the lives of hundreds of thousands of animals, but you're also help save the environment. And I realize that me and maybe a hundred thousand other people who are vegan aren't really going to completely change how everything is working. But I think there's a whole other aspect to being a vegan and I think it has to do with spreading the knowledge of 
of, of how great it is for society and how great it is for the environment. So seeing these restaurants in low income areas was really eye opening because a lot of the times you'll only see like really high class vegan or vegetarian restaurants in really posh places. First of all, it's great that there are vegan and vegetarian restaurants anywhere, but when you have them in low income places, you make that food and that lifestyle and therefore the saving of the planet more accessible to people who normally would not. You make that kind of food, fresh food, healthy food, food that is not processed, you make that kind of food more accessible for people who are more prone to heart disease, who are more prone to high cholesterol, who are more prone to diseases that ultimately stem out of food con their food consumption. I just think we need more places like that. So, yeah. <laughs> hey! Um, Mackenzie, who's here on YouTube, I'll put her link in the description. Um, she does a thing called Meatless Monday, and I think that is incredible, and I think everybody should do that. If it's not Monday, take one day out of the week where you just don't eat meat. It doesn't have to be vegan, it doesn't have to be organic. Try to observe and see how you feel the next day. And lastly, I want to share one Netflix movie that is literally at the top of my list for recommendations if you are looking for something new and cool to watch on Netflix. Fair warning, it's a little bit out there, but in the best way. It's informative, it's eye-opening. Everything that you're going to hear will completely change the way you think about the way that this country is run and some of the things that you've probably been told that may be contradictory to what the truth is. So it's called Zeitgeist. Um, it's incredible. It's about, it's two hours long. So yeah, go check it out. So thank you guys so much for what <laughs> I'm going to be cycling through this kind of video, my Eva TV and connective commentary over the next couple of months. Um, I really just want to put different content out there for you guys so that there's choice and that there's, um, a little bit more cool stuff. So if you guys have anything you want me to talk about or any really cool movies you think I should watch, please leave them down below. I love you guys.